Hey guys, welcome back to the Majestic 120 Project. Now, this may seem crazy. Why would I want to be poking around with another chassis when I have half a dozen ongoing other projects? Because it's maddening. <laughs> Every other project is on hold for a variety of reasons. Waiting for parts to arrive. Waiting for the weather to warm up so I can paint. Uh, very frustrating. <laughs> so I thought... Uh, I'd poke around with this a little bit. I'd already pulled the chassis back when I first got this set from the uh, early television convention. Um, and of course I did the earlier video where I checked things out. Uh, and I got to thinking, in light of my recent um, basically successful power-ups, or at least initial power-ups where I could get some life out of a set, uh, I thought why not give this a try? Let's see if we can form up the caps. Let's see if we can get uh, any kind of image on the screen. Now, I've already gone through and checked the tubes. In the past, I've tried powering up a lot of sets with the original tubes in there, thinking it would make the process more interesting. It's just led to a lot of wasted time. So, I've already checked the tubes. They were all good with the exception of, I think, one tube in the IF and one tube in the tuner. Those have been replaced. The set uses a number of tubes that I have yet to encounter in a TV, which makes this kind of interesting, too. Uh, like the 6AV5 tube used for the uh, horizontal output. You know, the SAMs I have in my hand is a little different layout than the set in front of us, but the tube lined up is the same. So 6AV5 horizontal output. That's the first horizontal output tube, I believe. It does not have a plate cap. It's an octal tube, and all the pins come out through the bottom, and it's small. And boy, does this thing run hot. I'll show you uh, in a bit uh, how it looks on the tester. Uh, another thing that was a little bit new to me is a 6 BC5 tube used for the RF amp and two IF tubes. And a little odd that it's using a 6C4 triode for the vertical oscillator. More typically you'd see a 6SN7 with two triodes and they would use it for two different functions. Alright, so what I propose we do is hook this up to a Variac and slowly start powering it up while monitoring the current draw, and let's see what happens. I had to remove the speaker from the cabinet. It uh, plugs in and the, the, the female end is kind of recessed and hard to get at. I thought I could clip in a speaker, but that wasn't going to happen. Now the CRT that's in here is the one it came with, and it's really weak. So I left the brightener attached to it, thinking it's going to need it. It's going to need all the help it can get if we have any hope of seeing anything. Uh, so let me get everything plugged in, and we'll start uh, powering this up. And I dimmed the light so we can hopefully see something on the CRT face. Trying to figure out a good angle to give you guys, I figure point where you can see a bunch of the tubes lighting up hopefully this set's kind of odd if you recall because the AC interlock is actually at the top of the back of the set so rather than having the cheater cord plug into the chassis there's a, about a two foot long cord to the uh, male end there so we have that plugged in I have already turned this on without the rectifier tube being installed. So I know that the tubes will light up. Boy, there's one problem with having a deep workbench. I cannot reach. And I'm trying to figure out a good angle to give you guys so you can see the action. Good portion of the tubes, I guess, from here. Uh, have everything plugged in. This set's a little odd, if you recall, that the AC interlock is at the top of the back of the set. So the AC cord does not plug into the chassis, it plugs into this little two foot long extension cord. 
Uh, all right, let's see. I've got my uh, AC line at about 70. Now, I already have powered this up without the rectifier tube being in, so I know that the tubes light up. But I have not tried powering this up with B plus before. All right, here we go. It's drawing point seven amps or so. This thing draws a fair bit of current, from what I recall. One point six amps. <laughs> Hungry little set. Is that a home out of the speaker? Yeah, hey, well, we got home. <laughs> now, with this low voltage, I wouldn't expect uh, any life out of the CRT or anything. These tubes are just barely glowing. Uh, but the current draw has been steady. So that, I'm not changing. So I'm going to increase it a little bit. I'm going to slowly increase this over the course of 10, 15, 20 minutes. Oop, some crackling. With only about 73 volts into the set, I would not expect uh, it to actually work. I am feeding it in a signal though. Yeah, but it, when I change the channels with the channel clunker, it's, there's no indication it's actually really doing anything. You don't hear any snow crashing or anything. so. I think we gotta increase the B plus quite a bit before we're gonna see any actual activity. All right, we're sitting at three quarters of an amp. I'm gonna let it sit here for a while. The idea being is slowly increase the voltage into the set with the hope that the electrolytic capacitors will reform and the leakage current will drop down. So even as I'm talking, I've crept up from points three quarters of an amp to just slightly over it. Uh, if the current starts shooting up or the caps get hot or anything smokes or pops obviously I'll shut the whole thing down. Otherwise I'm going to keep slowly increasing the power until hopefully we start seeing some life. Ooh, and we are now starting to see some life. I have slowly worked my way all up to about 110 Ooh, things are kind of jumping around. Turn this down a little bit. That was weird. Like the current draw kind of jumped up and down and up and down and then sort of stabilized. But hey, we sort of have kind of a raster of sorts. The hum from the speaker has not diminished at all, so at least one of the filter caps on the B Plus is not doing what it's supposed to. Or filter cap somewhere is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Well, but the tuner's doing something. Hey, it can actually kind of hear something. I'm adjusting the fine tuning. It's horrible garbled sound, but that is sound. And yeah, and it's only on that station. That's, that's, that's the station I'm feeding in. We don't get it on these other stations. Uh, let's see. That will be brightness. So even though the CRT measures super dead with that brightener on it, do something sort of there. I think it's horizontal hold and this is a vertical hold. I think that's focus. One of these will be height and one of them will be linearity. So we have no synchronization happening at all. Let's 
So what I propose doing next, since it's not going to work properly without a good power supply, is to replace uh, the main caps on the right after the uh, 5U4 rectifier and see if we can knock down some of this horrible hum. Oh, I'd mentioned that the 6AV5 is really bright. Well, there it is. And that sucker, as you can imagine, uh, feels really hot too. But it's not red plating. It, uh, it, it runs that hot, even in the tester. So they took a beam power tube, like a 6BG6, like an 807, and they crammed it into a little octal tube. <laughs> and that's what's roasting away. Now it's bigger than the 6W4 octal tube next to it. Uh, but I noticed that later revisions, the 6AV5A, they're much bigger. They went to more like a Coke bottle type shape. So uh, this, this is like a first generation. Um, this is an early 6AV5, which was introduced like the same year as this TV4849. And I get the impression that they realized maybe they went a little bit too far and they made the envelope and the plate larger in later uh, revisions of this tube. So the what would normally be a plate cap, we've got some pretty uh, gnarly um, voltage pulses. It's going out through the base. And I think uh, you have to use special base material and I think they isolated the pin on either side of it. We'll take a closer look at it at that as we work on the set. The chassis rests comfortably on its side and makes it pretty easy to get at everything. Now a lot of the electrolytics in this set are individual, so there's actually only two cans. And they're both up here. One of them goes right through the chassis and extends out <laughs> through the other side. And here's the other one, which I think is the main filter cap for the power supply and it's it's a bit warm. I'm used to these going open and they're just cold but they're not effective but this one this is warm and that's that's something you, you want to watch out for because if that gets hot it can vent and it's definitely going to drag down the power supply uh, even if it doesn't vent. Let's see I think it's three, sec yeah, three section cap twist lock. Uh, how do I want to do this? See, if it was open, no, it's it's never good practice to leave a cap in circuit, but if it was open, I could tack a cap in parallel with it. But if it's getting warm, that means it's leaky, and there's current flowing inside of it where it shouldn't be, which means tacking a cap in parallel with it is not going to take care of this problem. I really need to disconnect this. Which is not so easy to do. One, there's this big old cap going right across it, but I can I can uh, clip that out of the way, at least temporarily. Uh, I don't want to just cut the lugs off, because I may want to restuff that someday. Which means I need to disconnect them. Well, let me, let me mull that over. Uh, so it's, I mean, yeah, it's an uncommon set, but as far as restuffing the caps go, they're all different types. Something like that, and that, and that, and that. You really can't restuff. Um, also, that really looks like a replacement. And these paper ones, yeah, these, are, these are electrolytics. That, that, that. You can restuff them, but they tend to get chewed up, and uh, in the end, I think it's kind of a matter of, is it really worth it? And there's also this deteriorating resistor. It's warm, though, so I think it's conducting, but I seriously doubt that that is healthy. It's probably drifted off value. The terminal the leads on it are very corroded, so I'd like to replace that ASAP as well, because it's... I'm pretty sure in the power supply circuit. So our priority is to bypass these electrolytics and see if I can dig up a replacement for that visibly deteriorated power resistor. 
the service info I found in Riders Volume 6 matches what I'm seeing very well, so I was able to get a handle on what I'm looking at. Indeed, this electrolytic is three sections, two of which are the main filter caps for the B plus supply, and the third cap is the cathode bypass cap on the vertical output tube, which is tucked right up there, and this big old cap here, 0.1 microfarad, 600 volts, is the cap that couples the signal to the grid of the vertical output tube. Uh, that guy right there. So, we'll be replacing that, which should help the vertical situation. And, uh, let's see, a three-section electrolytic. Here are two of the sections. It's uh, C57 there, so a couple of 40 microfarads at 450 volts with a filter choke in between. Here's that focus control with that miserable-looking uh, power resistor, and you see that that goes right across the focus coil. Uh, so uh, definitely, if this is open or bad, it's going to affect voltages going to the set. And let's see that final. And there's that final uh, electrolytic in that three section. It's 100 microfarad at 50 volts on the cathode of the vertical output tube. So what I decided to do is un hook very carefully with the soldering braid and uh, just carefully uh, unwrapping the wires from all the lugs on that cap and then I'm going to take the cap out it's uh, twist uh, lugs on the bottom, I'll straighten those out and slip it out now, that's a little awkward to get at and some of the circuitry you would think is virtually impossible to get at but as one of you pointed out early on when I first looked at this uh, set that hey, it looks like the sides come off, and yeah, <laughs> a bunch of sheet metal screws, and this comes off. And this, by the way, this is a very heavy chassis. This is some pretty thick gauge steel they use. But boy, how nice is that? You take that off, and bam, you have complete access to everything, including the cobwebs. Uh, there's another power resistor that I'm very suspicious of. I was curious how this electrolytic they have poking through. Oh, was that really just because it was getting too close to the power switch? Could be, could be. <laughs> Maybe somebody's uh, was a little off when they laid out these caps, because, yeah, with that extending a couple more inches, that would very likely bump into one of those lugs. <laughs> uh, let's see, and that is a four section. I'm also realizing there, there definitely were some old repairs on this, and they, uh, whoever did it was a little, a little rough with the soldering iron because there are places where I'm finding wires that have charred insulation on them. So when they installed this cap replacement, uh, replacement cap, they melted that wire. All right, ready for another power up. We have a new 0.1 microfarad vertical up coupling cap two new 47 microfarad 450 volt power supply filter caps put on a temporary little terminal strip here grounded and the uh, leads that were going to those lugs are not over here I didn't bother taking this out because the twist lugs are pretty difficult to get at so it's just it's completely disconnected isolated from the circuitry the third cap I just tacked in right over here because it simply went from that cap over to here with that blue wire which is now going to nothing Ah, uh, and finally, uh, yeah, boy, this this was even more miserable than I realized. So uh, that got removed and replaced with a nice new vitreous enamel wire wound power resistor. All right, let's give this a try. No horrible hum out of the speaker. That's a nice change. Maybe the reception got better. Much better. But... Oh, Aster.
turns out the uh, anode connection on the side of the CRT had come loose, so we are still working. Okay, that's horizontal hold. And this is vertical hold. And you can see some video modulation going on, but the horizontal hold is way off. So. Well, that's kind of something. I'm about ready for another power up. I focused my efforts along the back side. It turns out I was mistaken. I thought this was a horizontal oscillator, this tube, and this little depression here. But no, that is the sink separator, inverter, amplifier, tube. Uh, the horizontal circuitry is all along the back. Horizontal oscillator, horizontal output, damper tube. So I replaced a few paper caps down in this area. Also identified the horizontal uh, frequency adjustment is through that hole down there. There's a variable coil there, so we'll get an adjustment tool out, and hopefully between uh, changing out the caps, adjusting that coil, we can get the horizontal to lock. And then finally I noticed something. When I had to set powered up uh, earlier, I would occasionally get a, a, a crack, a pop. Uh, I think what's happening is uh, this DAG is not grounded. I believe it's supposed to be pressing up against these metal tabs that uh, got bent back, meaning a charge is building up on this and occasionally it will discharge through this gap. This is supposed to be grounded to help filter the high voltage. So I'm going to shove something conductive in there to bridge that gap and then uh, let's power this puppy up again. Well, it turns out the vertical oscillator is very simple. Vertical uh, oscillator blocking transformer, 6C4 triode. Not much to go wrong with it. Uh, and it turns out I already replaced the two paper caps in the circuit. But I checked there is a resistor in series with the vertical hold control. It should be 1.5 mega. It was closer to 2. I just replaced it. Turned the setback on. Let's see... Eh, yes, it's super touchy. Thinking we work more on the sync circuit and uh, gain that will improve. But hey, that uh, at least on the right hand side of the screen, it's looking really good. This side has got ooh, some weirdness. There's some some banding. Oh yeah, really visible effect with no signal. So there's a lot of ringing on that side. That's uh, going to be in the yoke, uh, sorry, the uh, flyback damper circuit. Uh, but hey, that, uh, that's not bad for not a whole lot of work so far.